we go. Good morning. Good morning, lovely people. I hope you're doing well on this um, grisly <laughs> Tuesday, the 27th of October, 2020. Um, I'm Mark Jay Aquaviva. This is your Yoga Solutions Live broadcast. So, uh, yeah, uh, I thought I'd try something uh, different this week. And rather than relying on uh, people finding the video and um, putting their request directly beneath, I, I did a poll and uh, offered a few suggestions um, for what people possibly need. And um, the the winner, <laughs> the winner was uh, neck and shoulders. It seems to be uh, unanimous almost. Well, it's a large majority of people wanted to find a solution for neck and shoulders. So, um, yes, let's get on with the content. Uh, <clears throat> neck and shoulders. Well, I've had a, a thoroughly interesting time with my neck over the last couple of weeks. Um, I, I'll tell you this story just just to sort of give you context of the thing. Um, <clears throat> I, uh, after a particularly good acupunct ac acupuncture treatment, uh, on that day, I made the mistake of doing some kind of mindless DIY, goal orientated, as in uh, I had to lay a floor and I was more concerned with getting it done before uh, before bedtime than um, I was about how I was doing it. And um, normally when I do these things, I, I'm, I kind of enjoy myself by playing with the how I'm doing it. And it makes it more of a kind of meditative um, practice. But uh, on this occasion, I, uh, it was goal orientated. I had to get it done. So um, and anyway, I, I, I was sitting there for about four or five hours, hunched over the floor, cutting tiles and whatever. When I came up, um, well, the next morning I woke up and I couldn't move my neck. Uh, something had frozen. So uh, yeah. now, uh, normally it's the sort of thing that would um, take someone to hospital or because, you know, completely unable to move without causing agony. Um, <clears throat> but um, no, I took it as an opportunity to apply my stuff and um, and it, it worked, but it meant that I needed to be conscious in my movement, moment by moment by moment. Um, and, well, for four days, no, for two days straight, without, um, in order to not um, cause the problem again. So it was it was what you would normally do if you're in agonizing pain. You'd you'd basically not want to move, but if you did move, you had to take care not to. Um, uh, cause a further problem. So, and, and most people's way of doing that is to freeze and hold and and prop themselves up and whatever. And I had the facility of working with these relationships that um, I understand as the solution. So, um, uh, to cut a long story short, the the takeaway that I got from the whole thing because it, it was two weeks ago now, and I've uh, even though the agonising thing. Uh, stopped after a couple of days. It was precarious in that if I move suddenly and wrongly without um, thought, if I if I was pulled around by my head or whatever, um, it would threaten to go again. So I was I was kind of forced by my body to pay attention, to listen to it, and um, the outcome is that I've got a brand new neck now. <laughs> I've got a brand new neck and I've got a brand new thoracic spine. And, I, and, and I've noticed that when I look at myself on, sc on screen, I can see that my, my postural habit has kind of reversed almost. It's trying out the other side. Uh, the, the normal way I do things is, is to sort of, uh, my, my, I don't want to recreate it because I'll put in problems, but I normally hang my head slightly to the right and um, as to avoid some sensation on the left, but now I, I, f I find myself kind of leaning over to the uh, leaning over to my left a bit because it's found a new line of support. Uh, fantastic stuff. But anyway, that's that's me. That's my story. Um, to get on to the solutions for neck and shoulders for for everyone out there. Right. So um, the methodology, the understanding behind how to sort your neck and shoulders. 
when people say neck and shoulders, they they tend to go together. It's because they're describing the relationship between them, as in um, they're, they're feeling the muscles. They're feeling the muscles being tense, held tight, restrictive, whatever. <clears throat> but the point I'm making is they, they're feeling the relationship between them. So uh, if you kind of hang your shoulders off your neck, then your neck is given the job of carrying your shoulders. If you um, uh, well, basically, the, the neck and shoulders are busy trying to sort of support each other in some fashion. At other times, when people feel tight, they, they lift their shoulders and kind of hold them up um, in order to not be so kind of tight in the throat. Um, the answer doesn't lie in that relationship, apart from to stop your shoulders hanging off your neck. Um, you, you need to activate, you need to be able to use your hands and feel supported at your shoulders rather than um, supported um, supported through your shoulders by your touch if you're using your hands. And um, then, then the shoulders don't hang off the neck and you get a bit more freedom. But to actually resolve the complications, the way of looking at the neck and shoulders, it, you have to include the throat, it's not just the thing at the back of you. No, you have to include the whole of this area. That area is a relationship between how you're organizing your head and what's happening with the ribcage. It's a, it's a relationship between two things. And if there's conflict in that relationship, then um, that's what the body's telling you when you have neck and shoulder pain. I hope that makes sense. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, if I get neck ache around the top of the neck, it's because I'm busy holding my head up with those muscles. So my head doesn't feel supported. Um, if I get neck ache at the bump at the base of the neck, the lower part, which is what most people talk about when they're talking about neck and shoulders, it's because I'm hanging my head and that area is carrying the weight of the head and it's not meant for the job. You know, the muscles in the area, that's, that's not their job to carry the, carry the weight of the head. <clears throat> so what, what we need is a relationship um, in two directions. We need, we need the head to have a relaxed floating relationship to the space above. So that and that's based on where it is over your base and, and how you respond to the earth. And we need a concentric release away from space, as in front, back and sides. A release towards the ground, away from the neck, away from the throat, away from the head and face. Yeah? That, that, that's the solution. So the, the um, so basically the answer to neck and shoulder problems in terms of what um, you need to do, you need to wake up the grounding responses that happen in the chest. Everyone knows about those. You release the breath and the chest drops. And but with that, you need. A relationship to space through the head that allows it to stay in space. Now that, that won't give you a, a free neck, but it will give you an open throat. And that's just part of the story, you know? So I, I, I'll, I'll, um, I'll say that again. So in order to experience this, maybe I, I can invite you to practice something. Um, Let's see. If you're sitting, and it's kind of better if you're if you haven't got a back to your chair, because you need to be able to um, you need the whole body to be able to move in space. Uh, and generally speaking, if you're over the back of your base, your head will be forwards. And if you're in space, as in if you're 
relating to space, if you're interested in what's going on around you, then taking your weight forwards, it will leave the weight on the base behind you, but your head will release into the space above you in front. So if, if you can just play, play with that for a moment, it's, um, if cross-legged sitting doesn't work for you, if it's hard because you know, your groins can't hold your weight up, then you can kneel. Uh, that, that, that will make it um, more uh, easier to find. Uh, and if that's difficult because of knees or ankles, then you put cushions underneath your ankles or you put cushions underneath your knees so you can relax. So if, what I was saying was, if your weight is towards the back of the base, quite naturally, if you're relaxed in the neck and head, not heavy, not trying to be heavy, but if you're relaxed in the neck and the head, then what happens is the top of the chest here rests back. And it rests back towards the back of your base. And you'll feel that more obviously with the release of the breath. And what you might feel, and I would suggest putting your hands to, to experience these things, what you might feel is as the chest drops, it's drop, dropping away from the throat. So essentially you're getting a longer throat, unless you're pulling your head down. The head will nod forwards, but it doesn't have to hang heavy on the neck. Okay, so the top of the chest can release down away from the throat. If, um, so now uh, if you uh, link your hands, grasp quite firmly so you can kind of relax your shoulders wide from the linked hands, place that somewhere on the top of the head, near the forehead, above the forehead. And you might be able to get a sense of resting through your spine as the chest drops away from you. And if that's the case, you're, um, because a little bit of support you're getting from the weight of the widening arms, the pulling wide arms, you can sort of lean into the hands with the head. And you're doing that from the ground, and you're particularly the ground at the back of your base. And uh, I suggest trying these movements. Uh, when we move, it's best to follow the release of the breath because it's uh, easier to find. Okay. So you're, you're here, you're relaxing the head, and you're feeling support from your widening arms, your pulling wide arms. You're, and you lean the head into the hands. As you release the breath, if you follow that leaning and the chest continues to drop back towards your base, if you take your attention to the point of contact the head is making and lean into it, your weight trying to travel forwards won't happen. As in, the weight stays on the base and you will come up with a long throat, okay? So it's about not holding the head, finding a way of relaxing the head so that the release of the breath down away from it allows it to release up in space. And if you keep going, you'll end up with a, an open throat and the front of the <clears throat> top of the head releasing in space. The thing that will go wrong is when the chest starts to lift, because then you haven't got support. So the chest has to continue to release to the ground behind you as you release away from the ground in front of you. So that will give you a, a long throat. Um, if the chest does lift, then you're going to end up with a tight neck. So we need the chest to remain grounded if you're going to find that release. That's part one. Um, part two. 
is kind of the harder part really. It's about the junction between the neck itself and the thoracic spine. So it's the it's the first few ribs below the neck need to work out how to release down away from the head. And for most people, because they're busy holding themselves up here, that's an impossibility. Uh, and, and they either lift from the neck or they lift from the lower back. And the result is a stuck bit of spine between these places. Okay, so this is the hard part. I'm going to go back to cross-legged sitting because it's kind of easier for me. And it might be easier for you in this. The first thing we need to do is to learn how to release that bit of spine through the body and through the shoulders. And if the shoulders are hanging off it, this is where the shoulders come in, in, in terms of needing some sort of awareness of them. If the shoulders are hanging off the spine and pushing the ground away, all you do is push the spine away from the ground more at that place. If you want to free up the neck and throat, then that bit of spine has to find its way through the body, has to release forwards through the body. And in order to do so, you need a kind of sense of support from your touch that allows the shoulders to move back so that you can actually rest the spine into support. If the shoulders, if you push the ground away, then it doesn't work. So what I suggest you do is you take a little bit of weight through your hands so you can relax. Um, <clears throat> and um, then the job is to stay relaxed, relax the head, uh, relax the throat. And imagine lowering your throat towards the ground with the eyes looking up inside the head. But as you approach, you mustn't get any heavier on the hands. You mustn't start pushing, right? So you start with a certain amount of weight that supports you. Breathe, and as you release the breath, let yourself down, <laughs> throat first. But as you get closer, you mustn't get any heavier. So what happens instead is the shoulders move back behind you. And when it feels like you can't go any further, you pause and you press down slightly through the hand, slightly more. And when you do that, the head will rest forwards with a longer neck, to cause a longer neck. Um, let's have another go. If you, if, you, if you join me in practice that time, um, it might be worth watching so you can see what happens at the end. Um, so, um, hands take the weight of my head and neck. Not too heavy. I breathe. When I release the breath, I let myself get closer to the hands without getting any heavier. So what happens is I'm dangling the throat. And that dangling allows the spine from the neck, the extent, extended part of the spine of the neck, to continue for, to continue to extend down to the upper thoracic. Now you might notice that my head is up still, not because I'm lifting it, but because I'm relaxing the throat towards my, my ground. The, the throat is at the center of gravity, not the head. But when I get close enough, when I can't go any further without getting any heavier, then I change gear a little and press down through my hands and doing so will start to support the throat back at the top, which means that the head can rest over that support. So I'm left with a relaxed head, a relaxed neck and throat, and a feeling of kind of looking out through the top of my head. <laughs> So I, I'm, I'm not looking forwards, I'm looking out through the top of my head without effort to hold myself up. That's the way you can find the release of this part of the spine. Now the job is how to come up. Okay, so the, the way to come up away from the ground is the same way we did before. So I don't know if you can see because I've got my eyes closed, but um, 
you've got this released spine with a head floating. If in that situation, and the shoulders are the, the shoulders are back, the hands supporting the weight. If in that situation you release the chest away from you, as you allow the back of the head to move away from the chest. So the chest is still sort of dropping away from you towards the back of the base because you lean on the hand. And the result, because of this change around the base of the neck, the result is the head at the top, top of the head at the back, releases away from that emptying. So you get a feeling of elongating the spine with no lift whatsoever because from the head down the spine is releasing towards the ground which brings you up and if you can have your attention in the space above your head the way the head is meeting space will be elongating the spine all the way down to your base and if you keep that attitude of releasing away from the face in the chest and away from the back of the head through the spine, you'll get a very strong sensation of the chest and spine coming together until that release of tension allows you to have a relationship to space above you but it is vertically above the base beneath you so there you go um, that's front and back we still got more to do That's the feeling. It's you drop everything beneath the neck down, underneath your wings, with the release of the breath, and it anchors you into the ground from this place, front and back. And the result is you can release in space directly up, back and front. The difficulty around the shoulders will be to do with the relationship to the weight between the wings and the ribs underneath them. So there's a, the, the first rib that meets between the breastbone and the uh, first ver vertebra of the thoracic spine um, is underneath this shoulder here. So a way of getting to that, and this is the way the body likes to be supported from space to earth. You might have noticed there's a front to back feeling. Um, you know, when the head at the front moves away from the release in front, but it's giving its weight to the base behind. Just like this is. The spine behind is releasing away from the head at the back, but it's giving its weight to the base at the front. The Head at the side releases away from. Hang on, I'm getting confused now. There it is. Head at the side releases away from touch on that side because it's giving, it can give its weight. There it is, to the opposite side. The head at the side releases away from touch on that side because it can give its weight 
to the opposite side. Okay. Same is true for the ribs around the base of the neck and throat. So if I relax over this side, the weight's down there, and that's a function of being heavy on this side. Okay. If I want to have space on this side that feels closed, I need to give the weight of this rib between neck and sh shoulder to the opposite base. And I'm, I'm making it obvious. And if I can, through rhythms of breathing, if I can drop, if I can drop that rib into the ground on the opposite side, it can fall away from the neck on that side. So I'm left with a sense of space. But if the head's heavy over here, what I can also do is, because and as you can see, the head's releasing away from that heaviness on this side, but if I can find a place for the head on the opposite side, where it can sit on that base, then on, on this side, even though I'm doing a side bend, on this side, the whole of this space is kind of open, the head's releasing away from the neck, the ribs releasing away from the neck. So I've got a neck on that side, a lot of space. But um, that's with me, with all my weight on this side. So, if I want to find the other side, I put the weight on the other side, and the result is the head releases away from it, the wing, the shoulder releases away from it. But what's good is if that same side of ribs can release uh, um, to the opposite base and that base which is that is off the ground right now because basically by going over here now oh, I'm confusing myself now I said by going over here this side is grounded this side can find support, but this side is now catching the weight. So here can still relate to the opposite side. And if when I'm in this situation where the base of the neck here is supported, the top of the head here is supported, then I've got space on this side, but this feels jammed up because it's lifting off the ground with the shoulder. What I need is for the ribs underneath that to connect to this sit bone so that when that sit bone falls away from me, it pulls those ribs with it. Very complicated to do with the, with the thinking but if you can find something in space that allows the body to be in space because away from the ground on the same side, but relate to the opposite base somehow, then that relationship will be the thing that brings you back to the middle. So then I'm in space on this side, but that relationship to the opposite base, underneath the, the base of the neck there. As I surrender to it with the release of the breath, it brings me back to the middle. That relationship to the opposite base there, behind me, as I release into it, it tends to bring me back towards the front, you know, back to the middle. If I'm way forwards and the spine is resting into that base, 
then with this still relating to the base behind me, when it drops to it, the body is naturally brought back to the middle. So we start to have a released relationship to the ground where we can drop everything beneath the neck away from us into the ground. And the result is a feeling of the head floating away from the neck into space. And it's through the rhythms of breathing. And the, the breath that describes this is Ujjayi. So uh, Ujjayi, you require um, soft, closed mouth, slack jaw. It's helpful to have the tongue against the roof of the mouth. And that will allow you to receive the breath with the sighing sensation by dropping everything beneath the neck into the ground. And the head floats on the breath. When you release the breath, um, rather than doing it through your nose, open the mouth and let it go. Uh, the jaw, the tension in the jaw tends to keep the head tense. So ujjayi is a little bit onomatopoeic, as in, if you imagine the u sound, as you drop your base away from you, as you drop your ribs away from you to breathe. And then the release of the breath is ujjayi. And I was thinking this morning that it um, kind of sounds a bit like enjoy. Hmm. Um, anyway, uh, I've gone over time. Apologies for that. Um, whether you understood what I was talking about or not, if you played with it, if you try to explore, because this is the this is the this is the answer. It's not about you learning what to do. It's about you exploring and finding what works. And um, in reality, and I'm talking about where weight is and where, th where things line up and how, how they can release. And that's the, under that's the underlying intent. We want to be able to let go of the neck, of the throat, of the shoulders. But the outcome of that needs to be leave us supported in space. So, the, so everything dropping beneath and everything above floating is going to um, give you that situation. Um, so it's your exploration. If you, so if, you know, if you join me, whether you got it or not, whether you understood it or not, then hopefully right now, you'll have a feeling of being a little more open in the neck and throat, and then a little more relaxed in the shoulders. And we didn't really do a lot with the neck itself. And we didn't do a great deal with the shoulders themselves, apart from allow them to be somewhere where they're not pulling on the neck, you know. But uh, the thing that we did do is work on the relationships between the th whatever is above it and whatever's below it. See, so that's the overall principle. But if it feels better, then great, fantastic. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear it. Do feel free to share this around Facebook. Um, for a few days before I uh, transfer it to the Aqua Legal website for Silver members. Uh, talking of which, if you want to uh, become a Silver member, um, now's the time. Uh, at the end of this week, I'm going to uh, close down the, the old version of the Silver membership, which is dirt cheap, less than a five for a week. But um, I'm adding, I'm adding, I'm upgrading it. I'm, add, I'm adding my uh, deep relaxation course, which is ever expanding. And uh, <clears throat> And the price goes up to nine pounds something a month. Uh, but if you want to join before the end of this week, you get the old price uh, for ninety nine or something um, a month, and it's locked in for as long as you want to stay a silver member. And it's a free trial, so you've got nothing to lose. You know, go ahead, sign up, try it out for a month. If you don't like it, fine, it's no problem. And and you can download what you like whilst you're trying it out. Okay. Um, other than that, I've got a workshop this Saturday, one of my 
Saturday morning retreat, so I'm looking forward to it. Uh, if it's as grisly as this, we'll need to create our own sunshine. And, and these uh, Saturday morning ones tend to do that. Um, gentle flow, appropriate for everyone from beginner to uh, seasoned expert. Uh, do come along and uh, unravel some complications, let go of some help, uh, fix mental impressions, and um, yeah, have a, have a good time. Uh, I think there's some space that's left. It's um, it books up fast this one, and uh, but uh, even if it's booked up, you can get a view only place for half price. Ah, that's enough from me. Um, yeah. Lots of love to you all. I shall see you same time, same place next week. Bye now.